unsearchable. One generation shall, shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. And men shall speak of thy, the might of thy terrible acts. And I will declare the greatness. They shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness. And I shall sing of thy righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are all over, are over all his works. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom, and talk of thy power to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. The kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thou dominion endureth throughout all generations. The Lord upholdeth all that fall and raiseth up all those that be bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thy hand and satisfieth the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked he will, will he destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Amen. This morning we should let these words, the word of the Lord, be our comfort this morning. God is with us, and his kingdom is everlasting, and his dominion endureth throughout every generation. His eyes are upon us. His eyes are upon his people, and as we are here this morning, we are not here in vain. The eyes of the Lord are upon his people. Hallelujah. We are here to praise him. Sometimes we are weak. But in those moments of weakness, we can ask the Lord to take our broken pieces. And the Lord will take those broken pieces. Because our God is a healer. Hallelujah. Our God is a grace giver. Our God is merciful. Our God is good. And he is in this place this morning ready to touch, ready to move, ready to heal, ready to love. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. You are worthy to be praised. This morning, let's just stand to our feet if we can, and let's worship the Lord. Let's keep our minds focused on him, believing that he will do a new thing in us. Hallelujah. Let's make ourselves open and available to the move of the Holy Spirit. Our bodies are simply a vessel, simply a temple to be used by God. If we let him, he will use us and he will move in our lives in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. As I come into your presence.
looking down on us and wrapping us in his arms. You may not see him, but if you give devotion to him and contemplate him, you can really feel him wrapping us in his own tender heart with much loving care. We don't deserve him, but we have mercy. Oh, praise God. We have mercy upon us. What a merciful, fearing, and loving God who knows how to wrap humans in his arms and care for them. You may not see him, but you can feel him if you set your mind on, on him, contemplate him. Contemplation here means taking a long look at who God is to us. In our times of needs and downcasts and despair, take a long look what God can be to us based on what he has done for us. Amen. Let us pray. Everybody everywhere, let us talk to him. Pray to your God. Pray to your God. Wrap me in your arms. Make sure that is in your prayer this morning. Wrap me in your arms. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for these loving words, God. the service in a very special way. Thank you for the leaders, the, the music department, team members who have put themselves together week after week to coming out to practice and to prepare themselves to worship you, Lord, and to lead the congregation into worship. What a beautiful thing, Lord, when we devote our time to you. We can see the result. That blessing comes when we sing as unto you, Lord. Open up our wells of talent and sing and play unto you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for that devotion. Bless everyone who are here today. And Lord, for those who are mourning of their last ones. The Kelly lost her son. Pray for her today. It's the sad thing to know when parents have to do the burying. But God, you know. So we pray you strengthen our sister's heart. Help her to know that God knows. And everything is in God's hand. He's not weary of well-doing. So we should not weary of depending on him. And accept the position he takes. Because God has dominion over every human life. And so God, we thank you that you do. And you can make the determination where we spend our eternity. Thank you, O oh God. Pray for Brother Elwada, and he lost his sister. Pray for him. We don't pray for the dead, but we pray for the living. For God, you let them be able to accept the things they could not change and to put all their trust in you for what has been done that humans could not do. We pray for God's mission in Jamaica as they lose another pastor. Just a few weeks later, four weeks later after the first one. But God, again, you know, another saint is taken into paradise. Another saint has joined the angelic band, the angelic choir. And we thank you, God, that there is a place for the saints. That is a place in reserve for the saints. Where no human tongue can go. Unless God let in that human spirit. And we're glad to know there is a place reserved for the saints. We look forward for your comfort, Lord, of the saints. Jesus gave us a good example of Lazarus in that beautiful place in the bosom of Abraham. 
We know that place is for your saints as well. Bless us all, Lord Jesus. Pray, God, for everyone who have lost someone during the course of this month or even this week. I pray, God, and help them to accept the things they could not change. But I pray, Lord, for the living, that they will cease these moments of loss to turn to you, Jesus, knowing that their life too is at stake and need to turn to you with a whole heart and a mind to worship. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For those who are alive, let us cease these moments as we see people pass us by or pass on to serve you. And our life will be in your hands, Lord. David said, I'd rather to be in the hands of God than among wicked men. So yes, Lord, you know it all. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Just tell, reach out to somebody and say welcome. Welcome to church. Amen. Welcome to church. Welcome to church. Pray for those who are working. Welcome the others here today. Not able to be here. I want to welcome Sister Brian with us. Who is away on her vacation. Good to have a Sister Brian and two children. Amen. So one is up and one is sleeping, but I guess you get him up early for church, but he's here. That's all right. Good. Good to see Sean and, and Han in church today. Uh, praise God for them. Amen. Praise God. And yes, Sister Kelly, you lost your son, and we are praying for you. Sister Julie, we're praying for you that God will sustain you and give you grace. And we pray for Sister the Kelly's family. Sister Kelly, Sister Campbell's sister is now in the hospital. Came out, went back in Great Britain. Just can we just stand and pray for her? She asks that we pray for her. Let the church pray. Dear God, we pray for Jennifer Kelly. Away in Great Britain, and sometimes she do listening to this service. But God, she's in the hospital right now, fighting against pain and discomfort. For discomfort in the body, pain in the body. Not know what's gonna happen tomorrow to her. But God, you know it all. Things. We pray for her healing. We pray for her comfort. Lord, I pray that she not be too long into that hospital. But it's your will, Lord. I pray that you'll rise her up and give her hope on her feet to call out to God. I pray this hour in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. God bless all of you. I offer condolences to all of you who lost someone. That God would enrich your heart with love. And mercy. We have some dates coming up. Our spring cleaning coming up. We need to refresh the place after every winter. A lot of salt and the shoes move by. They saw, you know they salt the street here in the city in the winter when the ice come down. It will melt the ice. So just like we have to take time to clean up. Our, we have to clean up the house of the Lord. Do some refreshing and painting if needs be. And outside, we need to clean up as well. And we are praying that they will fix the building outside there. We went through a heavy winter. <laughs> so we pray that they will get it fixed. And so the house of the Lord will look nice. Amen, church? So where we, we gather to worship God, we want it to look nice. So we want to come and make sure at least inside it's looking nice and thanking Sister Thomas every week she come in and clean up and refresh the place so we can walk into a nice clean place. God will not dwell in dirty, dirty vessels. <laughs> well, my grandmother used it in the term that the house must be kept clean. So is my mother. The house must be kept clean. God will not dwell in 
dirty house. That's what my grandmother said. And I believe her. House must be kept clean and nice so the presence of God can come in. Amen. Keep it clean. All right, especially the kitchen. I'm not saying God is coming for a cup of tea, but. <laughs> Come on. Gotta have that kitchen clean and nice. So visitors come in the name of the Lord, they get a nice cup of tea. Milo or Sorcy, whatever. Minty, yeah. Busy, anything. Praise God. What am I talking like? This wasn't my plan. It just came up. God bless you today. Let me stop. God bless you today. And also we have in a Friends Day kind of. I think we pinned down a date for Friends Day. And I hope it will fit. June 16. June 16 is Friends Day. That's when we invite all our friends to church. At least if it's only the one time for the year, invite your friends and family out with you to church. Amen? So we can worship. The whole idea is to worship in with your friends and family at least once a year. And we set that day aside. So June 16, followed by a barbecue. We will feed them with all the jerks that is on the Jamaican menu. That's our cooks are Jamaican, so you know that they're not going to cook weird steak. They're going to have your jerk chicken and jerk this and jerk that. They jerk everything. So <laughs> jerk and burger, jerk and dog, everything they jerk. So when we get some European cook, we can get some weird steak and medium weird and all those weird stuff. So we praise God for that beautiful day that we spend. And we usually try to have the, the thing out there for the children. What do you call it again? Bouncing castle for the children. And they bounce all that right of the church. They keep bouncing into the night or into the evening. And we feed everybody. So always be a great day, Friends Day. So we're looking forward for that. So we need to... Yes, all right, good. Right, and May 22nd will be a wedding coming up, Brother Bishop. June, yeah, June, you don't want to mess up that day. <laughs> All of you dressed up May 22nd. <laughs> Where's the groom? Where's the bride? <laughs> they really are like, oh, did they put off? No, the date is late. So, June 22nd. All right. God bless you. As I said, everybody won't be invited, but pray for them. Amen? So God will bless their union. All right. You ready to dive into the Word of God? Yes, bless. That's, that's my nicest part. Sister Diane, good to have you. Amen. It's the nicest part of church is when we can dive into the Word of God. So we are embarking upon a series of teaching in a very different way because I believe it's time for the church to start eat hard bones I like the hard bone stuff we're not like little babe drinking milk every day we drink milk it's time we eat some steak now and potatoes yellow yam Hard food to make us strong and energi energetic. Same thing with the word of God. Go a little deeper than God so loved the world that he go give his only begotten son and whosoever believe it in should not perish. Well, go into that a little deeper because it's, it's deeper than what you just read. If you ever take time to go into that one verse, John 3, 16, that would take the entire service and next week. To go into that one verse, John 3, 16, it's very deep than what you imagine. That creator God have a son and he's a spirit, the eternal spirit of a son. How could that be? That is deep stuff. So let's take time to dive in the word of God and understand the depth of the word of God and learn. And when you find out why God said what he said, then you're going to be want to serve in God even more. So you don't not just in the shallow water. <laughs> you're able to dig deep, a little deeper. So I love that. I, as I said, I love challenging messages. 
the first is bring a deeper sense to my mind, to my heart. So let's go a little deep today. Turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 28. And stand when you find it, please. And let's see how, what, we're gonna, what ocean we're going to go into today, whether it is the Pacific or the Caribbean Sea or the Aegonic Sea. I don't know if that still exists. People still say, what's the other one? The Atlantic Ocean, Pacific, Indian Ocean, and all of them. So let's see. You can tell me which one you think we're going to be in today, all right? Which one you thought we were in last week? Deep one. one. (laughs) They say the deepest part of the sea is like 10 kilometers. The deepest part of the, some part out there, Indian Ocean, somewhere there. The deepest part. Stan, when we figure out, tell me which one when we finish, we're into today. Matthew chapter 28. We're going to read from verse 18 to 20. Let us read together. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And look, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Go to Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all were with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven or different tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. Amen. Amen. Bow your heads, please. Sister Kelly, can you just pray? that word there, dogmas, your word. <laughs> Amen. Very, very theological there. Praise God. Amen. 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 So let me start this way by saying, before the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit worked without, outside of the human. Like God selected individual at given time and pour out his spirit upon them. But these were selected individuals. For example, Moses, Gideon, and David, and so on. Not everybody had the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That is before the day of Pentecost. But after the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was made available to everybody. As much as who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ could receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So far, so good? Now, Jesus, and we are coming up to to baptism, so this is good uh, for the people who's going to be baptized to understand the depth of this when Jesus said, baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Ghost. I I know I've spoken about this many, many times, but whatever is written a full time is for learning. But today we go a little deeper than it, go into the dogma of this. Amen. So the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are the first cause of everything. Tell your neighbor what I just said. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost is the unmoved that moves. Nobody moves God. 
Nobody pushes God. He is the unmoved that moves everyone agrees that something new came into the world on the day of Pentecost. Something new happened. People having the indwelling of the Spirit of God. That had never happened before in human history. However, for some people, it is a struggle to articulate the experience of all the Trinity work. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's a struggle for many people, many Christians, actually, I'm talking about. Not people who are not Christian, because they can't stay at the outside and try to critique what is on the inside. But for many Christians, it's a struggle to understand how God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit work. However, God provides what we call theologians. And don't be frightened when you hear this word. It's just people who take time to study the word of God. Study the writings of Moses and the prophets. Study the writings of the apostles of Jesus. They take time to study. So if you're looking for scientists in Christianity, you would be looking at what we call theologians. They take time to study. That's all it means. So far, so good. So these are words that Christian we should not be afraid of. And the word that the sister used in her prior there. Don't be afraid of those words because it's a very interesting part of the Christian faith. So we have these outstanding theologian from Cappadocia. Cappadocia is in Turkey. And we call him the, the, the Bishop of Caesarea. Uh, Basil, Bishop of Caesarea, 329 to 79. His younger brother, Gregory, Bishop of Nyssa, and his friend, Gregory, Bishop of Nazanus, 329 to 91. They were called the Cappadocians. They were also trained in Greek philosophy. And don't be afraid of this word when we use it it's not big words or anything to frighten about. Philosophy or a philosopher is someone who reasons. You take time to reason what has been said. In other words, how could that be? And these bishops were philosophers. They take time to reason about the scripture. To ensure that they understand what the prophets and Moses wrote and the apostles about the life of Jesus and the things he, he did and the things he said. They were trained in Greek philosophers and were considered deeply spiritual men. The bishops learned Greek, which includes scientific demonstration. They started out with the term kergma and dogma. You didn't see my message, right? No, dogma or kergma was the public teaching of the church based on the scripture. So what is dogma? Dogma represented the deeper meaning of biblical truth, which could only be apprehended through religious experience and expressed in symbolic and form. So dogma is your belief or what comes out of your belief. And you may need to express what is in your belief. Amen? So we could express what so we could express what in our belief through, for example, we have plates for the lunch. So when you see these plates, we use them for the Lord's Supper. So we never want to see anybody else use these plates for for the unless it's for the Lord's Supper. Our offering. So we are expressing this. We have these special plates to receive your offering. So we are expressing how we feel. We also, <laughs> we also have the cross. As a symbol of our expression, our dogma, what we believe. So the cross stands in our forefront. 
right, to represent that our Lord crucified on the cross. We don't go into, in our church, we don't go into the image of Mary and all that and images of the prophets and the apostles. We don't go that far because we are afraid we start worship humans. But you can't go wrong with the cross. It's real. Jesus was nailed to the cross. Amen. So that's our dogma. It's how we feel. We want to remind people that our Lord was crucified on the cross. That's how we feel. It's inside. The Bible didn't say we should have the cross in the church, but that's how we feel. That our Lord, a symbol of our Lord, must be in the church. And since we're not allowed to have any image of our Lord, then we don't. Because God said that, right? Oh, praise God. Behind the, lit the liturgical symbol, like the cross, such as we also have public worship, baptism, the Lord's Supper, feet washing, the cross, and Sunday worship. These are our dogma, our belief that represents us as Christians. So you, I think I was talking to a one Jewish friend of mine, or the family, particularly Sister Merle, some years ago, and she said, why Christians are always going out and evangelizing people to come into their faith? We don't do that. We just reach out to Jews to be a part of our faith. Or if you converted into being a Jew, then yes. But Christians try to get everybody in their faith. <laughs> Was, was very interesting. So that's, that's a part of our dogma. We like others to know about what we believe in. Sunday, you will catch Christians worshiping on Sundays. It's part of their belief. And that is very deep. We did not just come up with that to worship on Sundays. So very deep. we'll go into that a little later. Now, the Cappadocians, when I talk about the Cappadocians, I'm talking about the early church theologians. In some cases, they call them early church fathers. But we don't, I we try not to use it because anytime you use the term church father, you think of Catholic fathers. But no, these men were before. They were far be before preaching the word of God. Catholic Catholicism come in um, 328 when Constantine used that word. When they had the, the big conference in, in, in Nicaea. And they come to some agreement over the, the divine nature of Jesus. And Constantine agree with the majority. And said, this is Catholic. That's how the term comes. This is Catholic. What we have here is Catholic. It will be, the word Catholic means universal religion. So Constantine and his, those agree with him begin to promote what they believe. So that's how the word came about, universal religion. But there were other believers who didn't join. They continue to worship God still. But the church under Constantine were able to spread because he was the empire of Rome, so they have the money. But Christianity was not only in that category. There are other people who are still worship who did not believe in the conference. Because you can't hold a conference and our dogma. Read the scripture and take it for what it is. So far, so good? Bless us, Lord. Now, the idea that not only religious truth can be expressed or defined logically, some others could easily clearly understand or understood some religious insight, Adam as a prolonged response to understand our religious identity as Christian, we need to have a long look at it. Why am I a Christian? How did this come about? And once you understand why am I a Christian, mean followers of Christ. That's where the term comes from. So once you take a long look at how I become a Christian and what it's all about, you're more better able to accept the message that is preached, because you're able to contemplate it. Oh, somebody worship today. We are leading out into the deeper part of the ocean. Oh, it's up to your neck now already. 
Put on your seat belt. If you can't deal with the diving part, kick the water off the neck. And buckle up. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Sister Gallimore said, put on your life jacket. <laughs> Are you praying, though? We're going to have fun with the word today. Are you praying? Praise God. We're going to have fun. I believe in having fun. And having fun diving into the word of God. Praise God. Amen. This is beautiful. New Testament believers rely on the Holy Spirit as the revealers as, as they contemplate their salvation. So we rely on the Holy Spirit as we begin to think about our fate, to lead us to understand our fate, whether it's a man-made or it came by God. So the Holy Spirit help us in our contemplation. Whenever you hear the term contemplation, it means I'm taking a long look at the situation. So I'm here and I'm looking at Christianity as it's been told to me. And I'm looking at the scripture as it's been read to me. I'm looking at the messages as they are as they preach to me by this, the interpreter. I'm looking at what the preacher is saying. Taking a long look. I'm not just going to fall for it right away. I need a little more reasoning. Or I need to, to allow the Holy Spirit to lead me into the understanding of what's been read or said. Somebody praise God today. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Tell your neighbor I want to take a long look. So the long look doesn't mean to take a year. It means I'm contemplating right now what's been said to me. And as humans, we can wrap up that contemplation in a minute or two. It depends how much we want to believe. Because if you don't want to believe, it take a longer look. If you want to believe the message of Jesus, it take a shorter look. It's like you come to church and you hear the message preacher and say, yeah, I got it. I want to turn my life over to Jesus. If you're not, if you don't believe it, say, I want to come back again. Oh, somebody praise God. So Jesus said, when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you the things to come. Bless your name, God. Christian sacred text, the Bible. When we use the word sacred text, we are talking about the Bible. That's our sacred manuscript. Our sacred text. The Bible is very sacred because it's the word of God. Amen. Christian sacred text states that the apostle John was in the spirit on the Lord's day. When he heard a great voice as of a trumpet behind him saying, write in a book what you see and send it to the seven churches. It is, it is ironic that John was worshiping on the first day of the week and that the early church set aside the first day of the week for worship. Christians today follow the tradition of the early biblical church in choosing Sunday as the main gathering day for worship. Why Jesus' disciples worship on the first day of the week? And importantly, Jesus rose from the grave on the first day of the week. Wherever the name, wherever the name Sunday came from, it means it is a day to remember and commemorate the life and message of Jesus, Sunday. All four of the men that are, of the men, all the disciples who had been with Jesus acknowledged the first day of the week as a special day, for it was a day that he rose from Joseph's tomb in Jerusalem. Read Mark chapter 16, 2, Matthew chapter 28, verse 1, John 20, verse 1. All of them recognized, and Revelation 1, verse uh, 10 to 11, all of them recognized Sunday as a day to worship. Now, for those who are few who believe in Saturday worship and can't understand why 
Christian worship on the first day of the week, let's have a discussion. They are still our brothers. People who worship Saturday and Sunday is our brothers and sisters. Amen, church. Because they're worshiping Jesus. They're worshiping God. They believe in God. They believe in Jesus. But so we don't cast people away. Our duty is to bring them in. Why Saturday? As Christian believers who worship on Sundays, we should never be afraid to talk about Saturday worship. Amen? Because if you don't talk about it, when you come into contact with people who worship on Saturdays and begin to convince you that your Sunday worship is wrong, you can't say anything because you don't learn about it. Where did that come from, that, that, that six-day stuff, that seven-day stuff came from? God. After God created Madden and Eve, he said, remember the seventh day? To keep it holy. That was the first rule that God gave to Adam and the other one here, don't eat of the, the tree of knowledge, good and evil. But what happened? The question is, did Adam worship on the seventh day and keep it holy? The argument could make that he didn't. Because if he was worshiping God and keep the day God said holy, he wouldn't have gone on to disobey God, probably even on that day too. He wouldn't have gone on to eat of the fruit of knowledge, good and evil, so Adam didn't keep it. So far, so good. He didn't keep it. He didn't keep the Sabbath day holy, or the seventh day holy. He disobeyed God. He hit up the tree of disobedience and plunged the entire human race into sin. Because if Adam was keeping the seventh day holy. None of us would be sinners today. And none of us have to choose a day to worship or to come together. It would be dialectic. It would be our nature to just worship in God every day and live holy. We would be just holy people. Somebody worship here today. But he disobeyed God. And then we never hear about uh, worship on the seventh day again. For over a thousand years. Never hear anything again. Hundred of years. We never hear anything about the, the seventh day worship. Until God chose Moses. And don't forget that if for 400 years the Jews were in Egypt. And they weren't doing the seventh day worship. That God told Adam to do. It seemed like they just forget about it. Everybody forget about it. Adam's sin, it closed down. No reading in the rest of the scripture that the rest of are under set. When men begin to call upon God again, they were keeping the seventh day. However, when Moses went to Egypt and take out the children of Israel, God gave the commandment again to remember the seventh day to keep it holy. And did they keep it holy? Like Adam? If they had kept it holy, they would not have been led into Babylon in, 19, in 587. They were led away into Babylon because they weren't keeping the seventh day holy. They do their own thing. They reject God. Rebellious against God. So they messed up the seventh day again just like Adam. So something new needed. Oh, Lord, have mercy yesterday. Oh, praise God. Again, something new is needed. Oh, blessed be the name of God. Blessed be the name of God. Another new day needed. And that could not come by human's will. It would have to come by God since we are his people. And need to worship him the way he wants us to worship him. If there's another day for worship, God would have to institute it. Somebody worship today. So where the term Sunday comes from? Um, earlier Christians choose the day, sun, day, and people said that the more Asian Christians were taught because they used to worship the sun as God. When Christianity came about, they switched to call it, instead of the sun God, they say Sunday. 
So rather than worshiping the Son as God, the day is now unto Jesus. So that's how the Sunday came about. And not only that, their, 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 their dogma connected to Jesus. Because on the first day of the week, Sunday, as it now called, Jesus rose from the grave. So if you want to commemorate the death and resurrection of your Savior, Sunday, the first day of the week, would be the best one. And the, f oh, and the Lord's, and they could not only call it Sunday. Early Christians did not call the day Sunday. They call it the Lord's Day. So a new day has arrived. Oh, somebody praise God. Will somebody worship here today? A new day have arrived, which the, the early church and disciples call it the Lord's Day, rather than the Sabbath Day, nor are the seventh day. They call it the Lord's Day. And what was the Lord's Day? The first day of the week. Can you find that in scripture? On the first day, Marys, the Marys went to the tomb to look for Jesus. That first day of the week, you know, he buried on Friday. He was there on Saturday. And on the first day, Sunday, the first day, they, used to, they never say Sunday. They call it the first day. They went to the tomb and he's gone. So they call it the Lord's Day. That day belongs to God, Jesus when he rose from the grave. We must embrace it. We must remember it. If humans can remember to celebrate their birthdays, much less the day of resurrection, when Jesus rose from the grave and broke the tomb asunder and bring victory to humanity over sin, what a day to remember. What a day to gather for worship. When the Lord rose from the grave, somebody worship here today. Praise God. He rose. First day of the week, he's gone. Matthew chapter 28. Let's see. Let's get scripture to prove that. We can't really find any scripture in the New Testament to prove Saturday worship. We can't find any. If you find one, great. But I didn't see any. Because we are test New Testament believers, not Old Testament. Amen. We are not Old Testament believers. We don't worship according to the Old Testament. We believe in the prophets, but not the sacrifices. Because Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. We don't do animal sacrifice anymore. So what is written since Jesus came into the world about God and about the, the act of his son, that what we believe in. However, we embrace the prophets. Not for their sacrifice. The prophets didn't do the sacrifices. They just write what God said. The, 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 the priests, the Levites, are the ones who did the sacrifices. So we are here following Jesus and not the Levites. Because the, the animal sacrifice abolished. When Jesus nailed to the cross, animal sacrifice abolished. And if it's abolished, we're not tied to no day in the Old Testament. We must tie to the newness, the Son of God. We tie to whatever day he chose to rose from the grave. Praise be the name of God. Are you with me so far? So what Matthew chapter 28 said in verse 1. Let's see if I just make this up. At the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And you read on. And verse 6. And he, so when they came to the sepulcher, they saw an angel in the, in, in, in the tomb or the sepulcher. And the angel said, he's not here. He's risen. As he said, come see the place where they lay our Lord. Praise be the name of God. Read, read Luke 1 verse 1. Amen. Read John 20 verse 1. So on the first week, the first day of the week, the disciples came to break bread. And Paul preached, Acts 20, verse 7, first day of the week. Paul admi admonished the people to take their offering to church 
on the first day of the week. 1 Corinthians 16, 2. The Apostle John called the first day of the week the Lord's Day. The phrase appears in Revelation chapter 1, verse 20. Let's go there and see. We're talking about our dogma. Praise be the name of God. Revelation chapter, what did I say again? 1 and verse. Verse 10 to 11. All right, we're, we're defining our dogma. Hi, John. Revelation 1.20. Hi, it was in the spirit on the Lord's day. What is the Lord's day again? According to tradition, first day of the week. And I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. If Jesus is the first, then he has to uphold that. The first day of the week would be quite hard, how okay for him to come back into the world. What you see is write in the book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia and unto Ephesus and unto Samaria and unto Pergamos and unto Thyretra and unto Sardis and unto Philadelphia and unto Laodicea. This is John who was worshiping on the Lord's day. Which day was he worshiping? Was he worshiping on the Sabbath day? Was he worshiping on the sixth day? <coughs> the first day of the week. Guess where he was? He was thrown to be banished away from humans' contact. Because he was a Christian. He believed in Jesus. He was preaching the gospel. And the Romans, instead of killing him, desired to punish him. And throw him on an island. All by himself. Hoping he would be destroyed by wild beasts. But that was Jesus' brother. They just can't kill him like that. Or one of Jesus' disciples. Amen. They just can't kill him like that. And while he was there, the first day of the week he remembered... Our Lord rose from the grave and he began to worship. That's why we have the first day of the week that we come together as Christians to worship like John. To break bread like Paul. To bring our offering and tithes into church like what Paul said. Amen. That's how it comes about. So we are in the driver's seat when we come to the day that we chose to come together to assemble ourselves to worship. So behooves who we are as believers, we need to come together on the first day of the week. Everything first belongs to God. Give him first. First of your income, which is set aside for the Lord. We give a dollar out of ten dollars unto the Lord. And it's easy for us to do it when we get ten dollars. But you see when you start to multiply it? To a hundred times tens and we look on the twenty dollars. Ah, too much to give to the Lord. But God said we should give it. And if you don't give it, you owe it. Offering is different. So on the first day of the week, Paul told the believers to bring it all into the church. Oh, bless your name, Lord. If Christian believers are not careful... They could get the wrong idea and become drawn away by the time of the day. Which could include all type of spirit form, alcoholism, ancestral spirit, idols and worshiping and worshiping, idol worshiping. So we have to be careful when we choose a day. It is not based on some spiritism. Because if we choose a day to worship God based on spiritism, and notice the word spiritism, not really of God, is something we come up with out of our spirit, our own spirit, and not thinking about God. So if we begin to choose a day that way, the day that has nothing to do with what God would require, then we could be drawn away by the day, even Sunday. If we are doing it out of our own 
self-gratification and not unto God, we could be drawn away. Even Saturday, if we're doing it out of our own self-gratification, we could be drawn away by other spirits. But if we choose Sunday to worship, let it be as unto the Lord. If you choose Saturday to worship, let it be unto God and live holy. Keep the day holy. Don't drive to work and mess up the, the, the environment with gas and pollute the here. Stay home and keep it holy. Just like how it used to be done in the olden days. And if the animal is out there crying because it's tangled up and dying, don't go out there. And if somebody is laid on sick and you see them through the window, draw the curtain. Keep it holy. But Jesus came and break up everything. He saw the man on the Sabbath day who was sick. And he alone walking by as a human because everybody stay put. It's Sabbath day. But Jesus walked by. Somebody said Jesus walked by. Oh, praise God. Jesus walked by the Sabbath day when he shouldn't based on human spiritism. And said to the sick man, will you be made whole? And he said, I have nobody to put me in the pool. You know why? It's the Sabbath. Everybody's in the house. That's how it used to worship. Everybody locked down. It's the Sabbath. So everybody left the pool who could possibly assist him to get in. But Jesus, who understand what human condition is, that is, it is an everyday help. He walked by and said, will you be made whole? And the man began to say, Sabbath, I have nobody to keep me. And Jesus said, take up your bed and walk. You don't think that man was scared because he knew what could happen to him? And they saw him walking in his bed on the Sabbath day. That human spiritism tell them to keep because that done long time. From Adam walk out of the, uh, the garden and from the, 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 the Israelite disobey God and he sent them away into Egypt. There's no record of them were keeping the Sabbath day. But here they, they, they came back and, 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 and they decided to lift it up again. And the, the, the Pharisees who were self-made priests, they were, they were the Levites that God had chosen on the most. They were self-made priests. They decided to use the Sabbath day again. But this man, when Jesus tell him to get up because he's healed from his condition, he didn't care if it was the Sabbath. He got up, took up his bed. Let nobody keep you down with a, with a day. If Jesus said move, move. Somebody worship. Walk. Worship if Jesus said worship. Praise God if Jesus said praise God. And everybody saw him walking and giving thanks to God. He could walk again. Oh, somebody worship. You get our dogma? It's deep inside between me and Jesus. Lift your hands and praise God. you got to understand Christianity if you're going to be a Christian. It's deeper than you really think. Something must be happening in here. Our encouragement must, must hinder up the scripture. And our dagger must come to the floor of the Holy Spirit. Oh, praise God. Somebody worship here today. Woo! We didn't make up this day. Jesus chose to rose on it, so we worship on it. And don't criticize us. <sighs> Jesus declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to God except in my name. Not through the sun or the moon God. Don't try to worship God through sun God. Amen? Amen. Sunday is the day of the Lord. There is no exception to the rule. No one goes to the Father except through our God. Nobody go to our God except through Jesus. And I have a reason to say that. Though people might say we believe in the same God, when you begin to question their dogma, you realize we are not. Because the, by the, by the way some people say they can go to heaven, it's not in the scripture. And the things they do to get there, it's not in the scripture, so it can't be the same God. Something 
not right. If you commit wickedness and say because you committed that wickedness, you're going to heaven, it's not the same God and it's not the same heaven. Are you with me so far? It cannot be the same God. The scripture, spiritual significance could not articulate non-believers. Non-believers can't understand the scripture. There is a religion out there that begs certain questions. It's called improper or inappropriate sense. They refer to realities behind the reach of words. They undergo introspective contemplation techniques. You can only refer to realities, they say, that lay beyond, beyond the reach words are the unreached words. In some cases, these religious bodies declare you create realities and words for yourself. You create spirits, beings, or form, idols for yourself. And in other cases, you remain silent as a form of your religious experience. So, you, so if you want religious experience, you create it for yourself. Don't believe in the word of God. Move away from God's word. Create it for yourself. And when you create this belief for yourself, the words that you use to create the belief, try to go beyond it and see what you come up with. Contemplate it, meditate it, and see what you come up with. But guess what? When you move God out of your meditation, and open up your mind. They said empty your mind. Your mind weren't built to be empty. It built to work around the clock. So if you try to empty your mind from God. Or from the word of God. And say you're meditating. And hoping up to new things. You might be surprised the new things that come into your mind. Demonic power. Demonic forces. And you say it's angels. Because the devil can transform himself into angel and can heal you. You sit and Satan can transform himself into position. And if you go beyond your feet, <laughs> Satan can transform himself into positions and forms. And if you, go, if you go into your realities of life and beyond the words of your reality, Satan will appear. And if you're sick, you get healing. But it's not of God. So you have to be careful. Satan can allow you to know things. And then you said you are Mr. Foreknown. You are the prophet of God. Satan can allow you to cast out Satan. Spirits. Oh, you think I'm just making this up? What happened to Jesus when he cast out the spirit out of the man? How did they attack him? They say it's by Belzebo. That's another spirit. He was working with Belzebo. That's what the Pharisees say. You could not cast out the spirit out of this man except by Belzebo. And Jesus said, hold on a minute. Does Belzebo fight against Belzebo? If you are in the kingdom of Belzebo, why are you casting out the spirits of Belzebo? You see what I'm saying? That if you try to go beyond your realities, create your own religion. Create your own realities and keep going beyond the words of your reality. Satan will appear. Belzebo will appear and can heal you and exercise spirit out of you. Same Belzebo, but the spirit lurks around still. Understand Christianity is all about Jesus, the Son of the Living God. 
And when you cast out those bells of those spirits in the name of Jesus, they move. Because they can't stand to hear the name of Jesus. They're frightened for the name of Jesus. So many religions in the world today, other than Christianity, but don't like the name of Jesus. The moment you mention Jesus, they get upset. The spirits get upset. And those who are not of Christ, when you use the name Jesus, like they want to heat you up. Ah. Are you praying for me today? Are you praying for me today? Praise be the name of God. So understand, not because you go to the man and he tell you everything. He's of God. Because the spirit of Belzebub ex exists. So when Jesus was casting out the spirits out of people, they thought he was working with Belzebub. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, no Belzebub spirit can harm the Christian because the son, the blood of the living son is upon you. His protection is all around you. The power of the Holy Ghost is around you. And nobody can harm you when you handle the anointed. He turned back on them. You don't know what I'm talking about, do you? You don't hear this type of preaching. You can sit there with your bells, you're not going anywhere when it comes to Christian because we have the Holy Ghost. We have the Holy Ghost. Tell somebody, say, you have the Holy Ghost. Tell somebody, the Holy Ghost work within me. Oh, talk to somebody. Shake somebody and give some high five. You are too, oh Lord of mercy. Oh Lord of mercy. Move around in this place and tell somebody, I got the Holy Ghost. I don't know why you're sitting there looking at me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Move around in this place. Walk out Belzebub and declare in the name of Jesus that you got the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. No demons of hell. Come on, people. Move around in this place. You little and declare that you're under the anointing of the blood of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. No Belzebub from hell can stop your business, stop your progress, block your children's progress because you pray them up under the anointing, under the anointing, under the anointing, under, under the anointing, under the anointing. Oh, Lord of mercy. Under the anointing, under the anointing, glory to God. Get up in this place and walk around and worship. Get up and worship. Jesus have mercy. Let no power keep you down. Let no powers keep you down. Obey. Read up, read up, palm of your hand. And Belzebub is telling you everything about your life, and you say it's God. One man can't serve two masters. If it's God, let it be God. If it's Jesus, let Jesus heal you. And if you die, you die if he didn't heal you. You're going somewhere. Stop going to Belzebub. Stop it. But where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. If you die sick in the name of God, you're going to paradise. Oh, glory be to God. Somebody worship in this place. Somebody worship in this place. Somebody worship in this place. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I'm 
not working with Belzebub. Belzebub don't cast out Belzebub. I'm the son of the living God. Woo. Are you jumping up in the water? You put your life jockey. succeed. Don't trouble God's people. Wow, that was a big swim. That was a big swim. Don't trouble Zion. How did song go again? Don't trouble Zion. Don't trouble Zion Zion To open heaven door Don't trouble Zion Yeah, yeah Don't trouble Zion Whoa. Don't trouble Zion Come on Oh, 
a church in your hand. God, we know there is a fighting. There is a fighting with our believers. God, when they come to church, they say they start, they start to come, but they turn back. Lord, it's mine. It's a fighting, Lord, to come to your house. But oh, God, you said you have the key to open heaven, King. And when they think we lock in, God, you open unto us. We thank you, God. We bless your name. Bless this part of ground where we are worshiping. Oh, God, inside and outside. Bless this part of ground. Remember your man servant. Hallelujah. As he deliver your words, oh, God. I pray for a special anointing upon him, Jesus. And as the church come together today, Holy Ghost believers, be watchful. God need watchdog in Zion. Oh, God don't want us to be called and lukewarm. God wants us to be on fire. Hallelujah, we need the fire. Oh, hallelujah. Isaiah said, I feel like fire. Shut up. Hallelujah. Within our bones. We need the fire, Lord. We need the fire. We need the fire from heaven. Fire, fire, fall on me. Like the day of Pentecost. God, we thank you. We bless your name today. And we give you the highest praise. And we say thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name.
for the sick. Jesus, we worship you, we, we honor you, we lift up your mighty name. Praise God, we glorify you this moment, Jesus Christ. We thank you that your presence is here with us, Lord God. Praise God, your presence is with us, Jesus. And at this time, God, I pray for those who are sick. Oh, Jesus, you know them by name and nature. Oh, Lord God, we thank you that you see and you know and you understand everything. You allow certain things to happen, Lord God. Lord God, nothing caught you off guard. We call on you right now for the sick. Lord God, those who have pain. Lord God, almighty and diseases and issues of the heart, issues of the body, issues of the mind, issues in the body, the leg, the foot, the hand, the heart, the lungs, oh God, the skin. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now, oh God, that you will touch your people. We pray according to your word. With your stripes, we are healed. We pray according to your word. Oh God, if we ask anything in your name, you will be there to help. And so God, everyone in this congregation today who is not well, thou knowest. I pray for healing. I pray for your special touch in the name of Jesus Christ. Those who are watching and hearing us and you are sick in bed, wherever you might be, in your car watching us, at home watching us, at work watching us, wherever you might be, and your break watching us, in the name of Jesus, be well. Jesus. God, I pray, oh God, for, for Jen, Lord God, in the UK right now, Jesus, you see her, you know her, you understand her heart, you understand her mind, you know about her body, you created her, you made her, God, she's calling, we are calling, be her, be healed, my sister. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, Sister Cynthia, I pray for her right now, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, she has a heart of worship, a mind to serve you, and God Almighty, a positiveness, have mercy, have compassion. God, you can do it. Touch her. Lord God. Yes, Lord. You are the almighty God. You are the king of kings. You are our healer. You are our healer. We can't go to no one else but you, Lord. And so we call you. Let your will be done. We trust you, Lord. Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, I pray that you lay your hand on this fellow, this brother, this son of yours. You know his mind, his body, his soul, his spirit. I pray in the name of Jesus. Be well, my brother. In the name of Jesus, be well in body, in soul, in spirit at this time. Be well, sister. Whatever the issue, whatever the situation, be well. Receive it in your heart. Receive it in your heart. Use your mind. Your mind is powerful. Mama Kato Shandalabasia. Yes, Jesus. Touch her, Jesus. I'm talking to you, my father. And 
I believe you're hearing me. I know you're hearing me. And I also know, God, that you're looking. Your eyes are watchful right now. Jesus, and you're all over. Therefore, Lord, I trust you as we pray. Thank you, Jesus. in your own way and we trust you thank you Jesus praise God thank you Jesus I want to this time I want to pray for the church in Jamaica God's mission you know the spirit of Belzebub is very rampant and two pastors in four weeks, six weeks, gone. Dear God, you plant that church in that area for a purpose. And it's by your reasoning, Lord, that ch that church is there. I pray you'll protect the church. Let your divine glory rest upon it. Your cloud like on the day of the tabernacle. When the cloud, the glory of God, cover the tabernacle. And as long as the glory of God was there, the people could not relieve, leave the camp in sight. Dear God, I pray for your glory to be over that church, God's mission. The people, the now acting pastors, the workers, you know them by name and nature. Cause your divine glory to shine in the name of Jesus like you are doing for this church. Let your cloud rest upon this church and let the people come for camping. For when they come for camping, your presence remain over the tabernacle. Your presence remain over the people. Let no forces remove them from coming out for camping on Sunday, the first day of the week that Jesus has set aside that his disciples and the church to follow will worship. It is your day, Lord, the, day, the Lord's day. John was in the spirit on the Lord's day, the first day of the week, when he hear a voice from heaven saying, come up a little higher, is when we come together on the Lord's day, Lord, we will hear some of that calling to come up a little higher. I pray for this church. You'll break the fetters that have people bound in their bed and first day of the week when they should be in worship. We come against that, Lord, in the name of Jesus. You hear the cry coming from every angle. I want to come, but I can't come. Something is holding me down. I break it in the name of Jesus. I cast it asunder in the name of Jesus. And the people shall release into fellowship and into worship. And the people said, in Jesus' name. The people say, the people say, in Jesus' name. I want to leave this with you. Hold the music a little bit. I was watching a case. And this woman went to the witch to get something done. And it was not done. And she take the witch to court. And the judge said to the plaintiff, you can't move out of the normal system of life to get help. And when you don't get it, you come back into the normal system to fix it. Case dismissed. One man can't serve two masters. If you are served, Jesus asks him what happened to you. Go in fasting and prayer. And he will reveal it to you and stop. Go to Belzebub. Because Belzebub will mess you up and he own your paycheck. 20% every week instead of 10 and we don't give Belzebub for him portion, all things are certain happen. Stop it. And turn to Jesus. This was not my message. <laughs> if you hear how I start out, it was not my message. But when I give my dogma, <laughs> when I give my dogma to Jesus, then, the, then I just put the message away. We will part one. Part two will continue. The Holy Spirit led me away into deep ocean to preach the way I was preaching. That's not in my text. You can take it and look through it. 
these songs was not there, but that's how when we give our dogma and, and, and the reading of our clergyman unto the Lord, it caused us to say what needed amongst the people. God bless you. Come and do it. Satan, you can't prevail. Satan, you can't prevail. Because of disobedience, God turned you out of heaven. Satan, you got to go, for the church is moving on. Satan, wicked. Satan, cruel. Satan, you can't prevail. Satan, you can't prevail. Satan, you can't prevail. Cause of disobedience, God turned you out of heaven. The Christian, you got to move, for the church is moving on. Oh, Satan, wicked, Satan, cruel. Satan, you got to go. Oh, yeah, Satan, you got to go, for the church. 
Some of your children are held down too long by Belzebub. And you need to trust Jesus and him alone. Because he has power over Belzebub. Humans know to invoke Belzebub and tell you where go so. But you are held bound to them. And you have not become more wicked and violent. Because you are under the influence of Belzebub. But when you come to Jesus, you love, you have compassion, you know to forgive and to embrace. Somebody worship God today. God bless you. God bless you. Ready to tithes and give your heart friend. Give everything you hold God. Give everything you hold God to the right a big check. Give everything you hold God. And let God and watch God open up the windows of heaven. Come with your heart friend. And give it to the Lord. Give him everything. I'll wait until you do and then we pray for you. Dear God, as the saints come with their gift to the altar, I pray they'll give honestly to what you have given them back. Given them, Lord, that you give back your portion into your house to bless the work. Provide for us a building. Oh God, I pray. Bless the saints as they come. In Jesus' name. Sometimes we give and manage how much the bills are paying, but give as God blesses you. Stop manage God's finances. Amen, church. Open up your bowels and give to the Lord as God blesses you. Amen. He lift you up and put you up. Give unto the Lord. One sacrifice you can give, and this is one of them. Come and give unto the Lord. Praise God. church available when you're given to the Lord. The building is prepared, the pastor is prepared, and the saints are prepared to pray you because there is a body of people need. That's why we give our offering, to keep a place of worship for the Lord. Amen, church? Yes, man. Praise God. We prepare a place for the people to come and worship when we give. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you this hour. Thank you for health and strength that you have given to us, the mind to give. And as the Lord, we bring our tithe and offering into the church. God, you see it and you know it and you also know the heart. Lord God, for those who have given online, you see it, Lord, and you know about it. 
So God, I pray for your blessing, that you will continually bless your people, and that your, your, the, 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 the tithe and offering can go directly to your work. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Well, with all what was said, we actually over before time. Five minutes ahead of time. Isn't that amazing? Oh no, you can jump out of the water now. Just jump out. Take off your seat belt. Did you, if you were listening to our sister speaking in tongues, I was able to interpret one word. Adonai. That means the Lord God. Isn't that amazing? God was in this place. And this is somebody who weren't able to talk properly. But were you listening today? That's I want the church. That's why we're supposed to remain silent. When somebody's speaking in tongues, there everybody's don't speak in tongues. Just remain silent and let the interpretation come. But don't and I, the Lord God, and whatever she said, that's what God is asking and saying to us today. God bless you. Stand with me, please. Devil tried to take her voice, but when the Holy Ghost started, did you hear she talking? Oh my God. Somebody, you, you don't even realize what happened here today. Did you realize what happened today? Satan tried to take her voice, can't talk, but when the anointing of the Holy Ghost came today, I was here just in awe. Praise God. Good things happen in church when we give our dogma and our encouragement unto the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord. Praise God from... Praise Him, all creatures. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide us all until Jesus come. The saints say, come for part two next week. God bless you. Greet each other. Okay. If the rest of you can stop for a little bit, this little girl here says she have a word to say to the church. So just wait a little bit and hear what she have to say. Just stop the greeting for a little bit. Stop the greeting a little bit, and she says she has something Hello, Elizabeth. to say. Hello, everybody. Um, I hope you remember me from the last time. My name is Mirabel, and I wanted to tell the church something that my mother would make me listen as a child, and she still makes me listen to it, and a quote that my grandma gave me. So the quote that my grandma gave me is, if you ever think about giving up in something, think about why you started first. Because you can't just quit something for no reason. You need to know why you want to quit and why you started. It's like a hobby. So you start the hobby and you just don't want to do it anymore. Like my piano lessons. I had a reason why I wanted to stop it. It was too stressing and it made me very tired and I had too much homework so I couldn't practice anymore. <coughs> and a word that my mom gave me was, so the word was in Creole, but I can translate it in English as well. So the word was, Muy beni on deo, muy beni le novilla, nempot saison, muy ma beni. Se bon zoom fem cosa, ma beni. So basically, translated in English, it's I'm blessed outside of the village. I'm blessed inside of the village. Which season, whatever season I'm in, 
I'm still blessed. That's how God created me. I'm still blessed. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and afternoon. May God bless you, and may you live in peace with, the, with God and Jesus. In the name of the Lord, I hope that everybody that's sick here will be healed. We need, we need healthy people. We need healthy people, good people, and holy people to make this world have peace. If not, this world will fall apart, and we do not want that. We want a nice and comfortable world which we can live in. We can't just live in war. War isn't good for us because if we have war, we won't have any friends, any family, any relatives. We need to be in peace. Thank you for your time. I pray for you today. Hallelujah. That the pain you're feeling in your body, the cramps, that God will heal you. God wants you to be well. Because when you're well, you can speak the prophetic message of God. God has blessed you and want you to speak to people of the condition of life. Tell them that war is not good. When there is war, we cannot have peace and we cannot have friends. God would bring this out in you at a young age. I pray you'll be healed. Your feet will be healed. The cramps would go away. Can you just bring the anointed oil? Let me anoint her. Praise God that your pain will go away and you will live for the Lord and serve him. Well, this is what happened when the Holy Ghost is in the place. When the Holy Ghost is in the place, God bring out messages. Anoint her, sisters, her pain is in your knee. Some, the cramp sometimes will bring it. Just anoint her. Praise God. Yes, a little child shall lead. Stand in reverence before God as we carry out this. Anoint her. It is not of you. So in the name of Jesus, I speak your word, oh God, that she be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. God is bringing us his blessing from every handle. Receive God's blessing Hallelujah. in Jesus. I won't go over her message. It's our message. God bless you. Thank you so much. Amen.